Hello. Today we're going to talk about radiation pressure. So we have two goals today. So first we're going to talk about the energy and the momentum that is carried by an electromagnetic wave. And then we will discuss radiation pressure and that is pressure associated with an electromagnetic wave that shines on or possibly is reflected from an object. So we'll start in on energy and intensity. So the first thing that's nice to know is that in an electromagnetic wave, exactly 50% of the energy is in the electric fields. So that begs the question, where is the other 50%? And an electromagnetic wave is made up of oscillating electric and magnetic fields, and so the energy is actually split 50-50 between the electric fields and the magnetic fields. So we often talk about the intensity of a beam, and the intensity is the power per unit area. And a good example of this is that if you talk about the average intensity of sunlight that hits the Earth's surface, this is if the sun is kind of directly above you, shining straight down on you, you get about a thousand watts per square meter. Okay, so that's actually quite a lot of energy. 1,000 joules every second shining on each square meter that uh, is kind of exposed to the sun. Okay, as long as you're, you get the sunlight coming directly onto that square meter. Okay, so if we have a plane wave, that's the simplest possible uh, electromagnetic wave where all the electric and magnetic fields are in the same plane. Well, I'm sorry, all the electric fields are in a particular plane. All the magnetic fields are in a plane perpendicular to the plane the electric fields are in. And of course, both of those planes are perpendicular to the, wave, the way the wave itself propagates. In that case, the average intensity is given by any one of these three equivalent equations. Okay, so the intensity is the maximum field strength of the electric fields multiplied by the maximum uh, field strength of the magnetic fields divided by 2 mu naught, or knowing that uh, B is E over C, you can replace the B by E over C and get E squared max over 2C mu naught, or E max squared, I guess is a better way to say that. Or you can say that uh, E is B times C, so you can replace the E max by C B max, and you get C B max squared over 2 mu naught. So those are all equivalent ways to write the average intensity. And so we'll apply that to an example of maybe a 3 milliwatt laser pointer. Okay, so a typical red laser pointer is under 5 milliwatts, so 3, 3 milliwatts is not a bad number here. And we'll imagine that our beam has a cross-sectional, a circular cross-section with a radius of a millimeter. And so I'm going to claim that the average intensity there is 955 watts per square meter. And where did that come from? Well, it comes from dividing the power, 3 milliwatts, or 0 0.003 watts. Divide that by the beam area, the pi r squared, uh, that comes from the circular area. And that's actually a very small number because you get 0 0.001 meters all squared. And so when you divide the 0 0.003 watts by that small area, you get 955 watts per meter squared. And of course, that is comparable to the number we were just quoting for sunlight. And you don't want to look directly at the sun. And so you also don't want to look directly into a laser beam. Even from a very, you know, it sounds like a relatively small number, right? 0 0.003 watts, that laser power is, but you still don't want to look at it. It's the intensity that really matters. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit more about this. We'll apply our intensity equation and we're, we want to calculate the maximum electric field strength in our beam. We're going to assume that it is a plane wave. So we can apply these equations at the top of the screen. Okay, so this is a good time in fact to pause your um, pause the movie here and do the calculation. So try it for yourself using an intensity of 955 watts per meter squared. Go and calculate what the maximum electric field strength is in the beam. 
And then we'll also go and calculate the uh, maximum magnetic field strength. Okay, so when you do that calculation, then you get I, 955 watts per square meter, is E max squared over 2 C mu naught. Now C, of course, is the speed of light in vacuum. That's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Mu naught is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 tesla meter per amp. Okay, so when you do that calculation, you should find that uh, maximum electric field strength comes out to about 850 volts per meter. And then you can use the intensity equation to find the B max, if you'd like, or you can actually just use the E max and use the equation that B max is E max divided by C. Whatever way you do it, you should find a peak magnetic field strength of 2.8 times 10 to the minus 6 Tesla. And just for uh, reference, the Earth's magnetic field has a strength of about 5 times 10 to the minus 5 Tesla. Okay, so we're a little bit smaller, but um, you know, not too far off the Earth's field here. Okay, so then we'll go on to talk about momentum and then radiation pressure. And so one thing that's really interesting is that light has no mass. So in a few weeks in particular, we'll talk about uh, photons, which you can in some ways think of as particles of light. They're kind of pack packets of electromagnetic energy, but those things don't have any mass. And yet, even though they don't let light itself or electromagnetic waves do not carry mass with them, they can carry momentum, just like they can carry energy. Okay, so now for one thing, that means our traditional P equals MV equation for momentum is not applicable. There's another uh, equation that, that does work, though. The other thing that happens is light reflecting from an object transfers momentum. Well, so does light, re so does light being absorbed by the object. However, light reflecting from a surface transfers twice as much momentum as light that's absorbed. Now, we kind of saw this before when we compared what happens when a very bouncy ball reflects off a wall, bounces off a wall, and compared that to the case of a very special ball that um, it couldn't be even a clay ball, right? So you have to fire the clay ball at the wall and it sticks to the wall. Okay? So its momentum changes from MV to zero. However, the bouncy ball's momentum changes from positive MV, say, to negative MV. So it's got a change of 2 MV, magnitude 2 MV there. And so twice as much momentum is being transferred when things bounce back compared to when they're just stopped dead or absorbed. Okay, the same thing applies to light. Okay, so instead of looking at momentum, we often look at radiation pressure. Okay, so pressure, of course, is force over area. So if you shine a flashlight, for instance, on your hand, okay, that flashlight beam actually, there's a force that that beam exerts on your hand. Now for a typical flashlight it's going to be so small that you're not going to feel that force, but there's one there. And turns out if you uh, put a very reflective glove on, okay, so a very shiny glove and the beam reflects off the glove, then you're actually going to feel twice as force, twice the force. Well, you'll probably actually feel nothing in that case too, but uh, there is twice the force exerted on you in that case. Okay, so let's look at pressure. So first we'll start with uh, the case where all energy, energy is absorbed. So the pressure is the intensity divided by the speed of light in vacuum. And it turns out that this value, the, speed, the intensity divided by the speed of light, is also known as the energy density, the energy per unit volume contained in that beam. Now, we've actually seen that before. If you think back to Bernoulli's equation, Okay, Bernoulli's equation had terms in it like 1 half rho v squared, uh, rho g h, and p. Okay, and the 1 half rho v squared terms look like kinetic energy, but it's not 1 half mv squared, it's m over volume, that's density, and so that term is actually energy per unit volume. Okay, and those are equivalent to pressure units, of course, because you've got energy density units and pressure units being added together in the same equation, they have to be the equivalent units. Okay, so we've seen this before, the fact that uh, pressure 
is the same as energy density, energy per unit volume. Okay, so then you do, do the case where um, all the energy is reflected straight back at you. Okay, so you shine a flashlight at a mirror, for instance, all the light bounces back. In that case, you just double the pressure we got from before. So you get two times the intensity over the speed of light and vacuum is your pressure in that case. And if you know how much area you've got there, then you can turn that pressure into a force. Okay, so we will do an example where we just we, we do exactly that. Okay. So we're gonna use, we're gonna consider something that's called a solar sail. Okay, so this is a spacecraft that actually uses radiation pressure for propulsion. Okay, so you send your spacecraft up way out of the Earth's atmosphere, and in fact, we're, we're going to imagine that it's so, uh, far enough away from the Earth that the Earth doesn't affect it compared to the, what the Sun does. Then we unfurl this huge sail. So the sail has an area of uh, 10,000 square meters. So that's 100 by 100 um, if it's a square sail, for instance. And then we just let the light of the Sun shine off it, reflect off it. And our sail is very reflective so because we want to maximize the force we get. Okay, so let's uh, put in some numbers. We're going to imagine our spacecraft has a mass of 500 kilograms. That includes the sail. It's the same distance away from the sun as the Earth is. That's 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. And at this distance, the intensity of sunlight is approximately 1,500 watts per square meter. Okay, that's actually a little bit higher than it really is. I'm just rounding things off uh, just to make the calculations a little easier. However, the number is not too far off from that. It's closer to 1,400 watts per square meter. Now, you might remember that a few minutes ago, I, I uh, stated a value of 1,000 watts per square meter, but that's for light reaching the surface of the Earth. And of course, the atmosphere and clouds and things like that will cut the, uh, cut the intensity down. So this is way above the Earth's atmosphere, so... We'll use 1,500 watts per square meter for our calculation purposes. Okay, so your job is to calculate the force exerted by this light, assuming 100% of the light is reflected straight back. And we're going to assume that 100% of our sail area is illuminated here. Okay, so try that as a two-step process. First of all, find the pressure, and then find the force. Okay, so again, this is a good time to pause the video and see if you can get these numbers yourself. First find the pressure, then find the force. Okay, let's go ahead, hit pause, and then when you're ready, play the thing and, uh, and we'll reveal the answer. Okay, so here we go. So the pressure is, we're going to use our two intensity, two times the intensity over speed of light and vacuum equation. This is the case where the light is reflected straight back, so that's where the factor of 2 comes from. The intensity was given, 1,500 watts per meter, square, meter squared, and then speed of light of vacuum again is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Okay, so in the numerator here we have 2 times 1,500, that's 3,000, that's 3 times 10 to the third watts per meter squared, and a watt again is a joule per second. So in the bottom we get uh, 3 times 10 to the 8. So 3 times 10 to the third over 3 times 10 to the 8 is 1 times 10 to the minus 5. And if you work out the units, you'll get newtons per square meter. Yeah, that's equivalent to joules per cubic meter, by the way. Okay, so then we want to convert this into a uh, force. So it's not a lot of pressure, you notice. And even though we have a very large area, right? 10 to the fourth meter squared of area, we still don't get very much force. So our force here is, our equation for force is pressure times area. Pressure, 1 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons per square meter, times area, 1 times 10 to the fourth square meters. So you only get a tenth of a newton. Okay, so a pretty small force. Okay, so let's consider that. So we worked out the force from the radiation pressure is a tenth of a newton. Okay, now it turns out, even though you don't have a very much, very big force here, if that was your net force, then you'd have some acceleration. That would be a small number too. But out in, you just let this go from rest, and you can wait 
you can let it go for days and weeks and months and years, right? And even though it's a small acceleration, you build up speed over a long period of time. You actually will build up a significant amount of speed. However, we have to remember, of course, that in this case, this is not the net force. We only did the force associated with the radiation pressure. So, of course, there's also a gravitational force. And if you work out the gravitational force, the force that the sun exerts on the uh, our solar sail spacecraft using gmm over r squared, and the mass of the sun, by the way, is 2 times 10 to the 30th kilograms, then you get 3 newtons. And of course, that's in the whole opposite direction as the force that the radiation pressure exerts on it. Okay, so the gravitational force attracts the solar sail in toward the sun, and the radiation pressure force is directed away from the sun. Okay, so in this case, that gravitational force is going to win. So if we really want to use our solar sail for propulsion away from the sun, then we've got to find some way to increase the, uh, the force associated with the radiation pressure. So we could use a lot more sail area. Now, 10,000 square meters sounds like a lot, but hey, we're going to need a lot more. And the other thing we could do is cut down the mass. Okay? And if we do that, maybe we have some chance of getting a net force directed away from the sun. Okay, so I think that is all for our introduction to um, electromagnetic waves, particularly, particularly focusing on energy intensity radiation pressure, and then this example with the solar sail.